How would that look like if you could engineer that in? In silicon? Consciousness? Consciousness. I assume you are conscious. I have no idea how to test for it or how it impacts you in any way whatsoever right now. You can perfectly simulate all of it without making any any different observations for me. But to do it in a computer, how would you do that? Because you kind of said that you think it's possible to do that. So it may be an emergent phenomena. We seem um, to get it uh, through evolutionary process. Uh, it's not obvious how it helps us to survive better, but uh, maybe it's an internal kind of GUI which allows us to better manipulate the world, <laughs> yeah. simplifies a lot of uh, control structures. Uh, that's one area where we have very, very little progress. Lots of papers, lots of research, but consciousness is not a big, big area of successful discovery so far. A lot of people think that machines would have to be conscious to be dangerous. That's a big misconception. There is absolutely no need for this very powerful optimizing agent to feel anything while it's performing things on you. But what do you think about this, the, the, the whole science of emergence in general? So I don't know how much you know about cellular automata or these simplified systems where that study this very question from simple rules emerges complexity. I attended Wolfram summer school. <laughs> I love Stephen very much. I, I love his work. I love cellular automata. So uh, I just would love to get your thoughts, how that fits into your, your view in the emergence of intelligence in AGI systems. And maybe just even simply, what do you make of the fact that this complexity can emerge from such simple rules? So the rule is simple, but the size of a space is still huge. And the neural networks were really the first discovery in AI. A hundred years ago, the first papers were published on neural networks, which just didn't have enough compute to make them work. I can give you a rule such as start printing progressively larger strings. That's it, one sentence. It will output everything. Every program, every DNA code, everything in that rule. You need intelligence to filter it out, obviously, to make it useful. But simple generation is not that difficult. And a lot of those systems uh, end up being Turing complete systems. So they are universal. And we expect that level of complexity from them. What I like about uh, Wolfram's work is that he talks about irreducibility. You have to run the simulation. You can act, predict what is going to do ahead of time. And I think that's very relevant to what we are talking about with those very complex systems. Until you live through it, you cannot ahead of time tell me exactly what it's going to do. Irreducibility means that for a sufficiently complex system, you have to run the thing. You have to, uh, you can't predict what's gonna happen in the universe, you have to create a new universe and run the thing. Big bang, the whole thing. But running it may be consequential as well. It might destroy humans. And to you, there's no chance that AI is somehow carry the flame of consciousness, the flame of specialness and awesomeness that is humans. It may somehow, but I still feel kind of bad that it killed all of us. I would prefer that doesn't happen. I yeah. can be happy for others, but to a certain degree. It would be nice if we stuck around for a long time. At least give us a planet, the human planet. It'd be nice for it to be Earth, and then they can go <laughs> elsewhere. Since they're so smart, they can colonize Mars. <laughs>